the floating point. So Kevin was talking about, if you put that MOP close to the floating point, then all of a sudden the valve needs to open more, but it won't because you hit your MOP because with flow, I'm, I'm assuming floating suction, you want to increase the pressure of your suction as high as you can, the higher, the better, because as long as you maintain temperature, that's a huge energy so, gain. Yeah. And let's, let's say, you know, you've got a supermarket with all doors on the cabinets at night, especially when nobody's opening those doors, you don't need the full duty of that cabinet to keep it cold. You, you could be evaporating the thing at minus four during the day, let's say, because you've got air changes and all that, and you want to get the product down at night. When all the doors are closed, you could probably evaporate that at minus two, minus one, and it'll still do enough. But if you've got your MOP set too tight, it's going to um, it's going to start clashing. Your valve won't open at all, and you'll be like, "I've done something. What have I done wrong? Why is it now not holding temperature anymore?" So yeah, it's it's when you're using floating suction really you've got to watch that. And a lot floating suction has become really popular for energy reasons. And I think one of the big things is, is that I talk to a lot of the, all the control manufacturers and all their controllers can do it. The problem is it's not being done in the field and we run into this issue and then it's like, oh, float and suction is no good or it doesn't work, but you don't understand it because Dan Foss, CC200 or Dixel or RDM, all of them, Worm in Germany, Worm, yep. all of them, they all do yep. it, but we need yep, to set it up well. properly. And if that's yep. not set up properly, it's not going to work. So, so I think, and yeah, I mean, it's something I've talked about before with people. The What happened, I think, was when we started bringing floating suction in, we were trying to roll it back onto systems and equipment that wasn't suitable for it. So you had racks with no VSDs, you big capacity steps. You had cases that couldn't do duty at anything less than like minus 10 evaporating, but you'd have them on the same circuit as something that could do duty evaporating minus four. So you'd end up short cycling the plant so your suction pressures lie all over the shop and nothing settles especially with electronic valves if the readings don't settle they are not happy you know and they'll shut because the super it's gone with a tv it won't just shut with the electronic valve it will and so you lose temperature and everyone says well floating suction doesn't work and uh, my friend connor who works for one of the one of our consultants in the uk he he is a big believer in floating suction and he's he is absolutely right that it, it works really well it just has to be the right application for it. You know, it's not suitable for every system. You yeah. and you, your targets are going to be realistic. If you think it, you know, you're going to get zero degree shelf temperature out of zero degree evaporating, you are not. <laughs>